In a recent BBC Newsnight interview with Jeremy Paxman, Russell Brand advocated that we boycott the inherently corrupt political system by not voting at all. It's funny how much people believe you when you're famous. It's okay for a multi-millionaire like Russell Brand to tell us, don't vote, you won't change anything, when he's getting to beat and delete Katy Perry. It's like, bruv, man's not mashing and dashing Katy Perry out here. It's more like he should have sket cuts, you know, like that fam. So before you start talking about a revolution, you need to check your privilege. How are you going to tell us that you represent the common people when what you're preaching plays right into the hands of the establishment? I mean, it's not rocket science. You don't have to do A-level politics or read Orwell to understand that political apathy, the disengagement of the masses, is what strengthens the status quo stability. Now let's play the numbers game. In 2010, only 23% of the general public voted for the Conservatives. 45% didn't vote at all. And from when the NHS is being sold off, EMA being removed, bankers running trains on the economy and tuition fees being raised, you want to tell us don't vote like say the 45% that didn't vote couldn't have challenged these changes. So with the Tories being the Tories and Labour and the Lib Dem proving themselves to be pagans, we went on a mission to find alternative political solutions. So I went and visited my Algerian brother, Ben Ali Hamdash. So yeah, my name is Benali Hamdash, uh, I am uh, the London Green Party co-coordinator and yeah, I'm someone who's standing as a candidate in the upcoming election. Why is it important that young people vote and are politically engaged? Well, at the minute we're seeing politics that really aren't listening to young people and isn't working for young people. Uh, instead of hearing like um, young people's voices, we're hearing everything they want ignored. You know, we're not seeing um, job opportunities for young people. Uh, the youth unemployment in London is out of control, and no one is doing anything about it. Uh, we're seeing you know youth centres being shut down. We're seeing every kind of priority. Um, you know. A, a, a uni education not being free. Uh, every single facet of young people's lives is not being listened to because we've got a, a political elite that will only listen to those that vote and at the minute the only people who vote are, the, are older people and we're seeing you know, almost like intergenerational conflict that older people's uh, views and needs are being put above younger people's and the only way to get those guys to listen to us is to get out and vote and use our voice and make sure that they're putting forward our, our needs and our priorities ahead of, you know, not their own. <laughs> um, what does it mean to be green? I think there's a preconception about the Greens only being about the environment, but we're definitely a party that is about more than just that. We're a party of obviously the environment, but also social justice and about standing up for those who are marginalised or don't have a voice of their own because of the way the system is. You know, at the minute we've just got a politics that is broken, and the Greens are about real change. We're about giving everyone a, a wage that they can live on, you know, being able to afford to live and get by, and, you know, minimum standards of living for everyone. Everyone should, you know, not have to struggle to feed themselves, not struggle have to have to find a house. We are, you know, one of the richest countries in the world, and the idea that there's anyone going hungry or not being able to find a house or not being able to clothe themselves is disgusting. And it's about, you know, shifting away the wealth from the 1% you know, and, you know, bringing it back to the 99% of people so that they can have a decent standard of living. And that's what the Green Party is about. And we are sick and tired of, like, the other three parties not doing anything about that. And why do you think it's important that young people vote Green? I think, you know, the Greens, like I said, represent a real change. And, you know, the fact that young people are really flocking towards, the, you know, the Green Party, uh, you know, our, our policy is about free education, about, um, you know, youth jobs and making sure that jobs pay a living wage rather than poverty pay that you can't afford to get by. Uh, you know, at the minute, the Greens are second and third in the polls, you know, people are moving away from the Liberal, Liberal Democrats because of how disappointed they are. Uh, and I think really the Greens are, you know, we're a different type of political party. Uh, we do listen, we're not a top-down party, it's not all about all the power being in the leader's control. You know, if you want to get involved with the Green Party, you've got an equal voice as anyone else. Uh, and we will listen and we do make changes. I mean, I've been amazed as to how much a Green Party councillor can do. Um, you know, London has the living wage in quite a few councillors because we had one Green Party councillor. Uh, and that's just a sea change. Uh, so, you know, really voting Green can make such a big difference. And do you think strategically it's important to vote Green to roll back the far-right threat of parties such as the BNP and 
UKIP? Absolutely. I mean, I think one of the biggest reasons to people to use their vote now is this surge of UKIP racism that I find terrifying. You know, as an Algerian, you know, my dad's Algerian, my mum's English, I'm a mixed race, yeah, I come from a mixed family. I'm proud of my background and to have someone like Nigel Farage disparage our existence is disgusting and we've got to get out and make sure that we're voting and diluting that UKIP vote. And London has a real choice. I mean, the polls are saying that either UKIP will get a second MEP or the Greens will have an MEP and the Greens is the best anti-UKIP vote there is at the minute. Uh, the idea that, you know, the, the UKIP MEP a couple of months ago was caught saying that he, he thinks Muslims should have a licence to be in this country. Uh, you know, do we really want that party gaining power here or do we want a Green Party that will stand up and say that we're proud of diversity, we're proud of a London that, you know, has citizens from all over the world and we're a better city for that? Um, and, you know, I'm proud to be Green because of that, because the other parties aren't saying anything about it. They're too afraid to, to stand up to UKIP. Um, so I think, you know, vote Green to make a real change and to stand up against that rubbish. And um, hypothetically speaking, what would the Green Party achieve by legalising cannabis? Well, at the minute, you know, we've seen the war on drugs has really failed. Um, you know, we're criminalising entire generations of people for using cannabis or using ecstasy uh, when we know that the health risks of these drugs are a lot less than even alcohol. Uh, all the minute by, decrim by criminalising these drugs is we're making gangs more powerful, we're making, making sure that they have lots of money to, to, to get out. But actually, if we decriminalise these drugs, we wouldn't turn young people into criminals. We'd actually, you know, ha be able to control, you know, these drugs and make sure that they're actually good and not tainted and not, you know, not going to make you unwell. Regulating. Uh, regulating them will bring them out into the open. Uh, and also it means that people who are ha suffering from drug addiction can get trouble, get help. I mean, we saw in Portugal, they dec decriminalised drugs. Yeah. Now, like hard drug use has dropped, they've got, you know, their, their society is better for it. And, you know, police can spend their time going out and arresting real criminals rather than spending their time, you know, arresting someone for having a couple of grams of weed. I mean, it, it's about priorities. It's about making a better society. And criminalising drugs has made society worse. And it's just, it's, it's not the answer. In part two, we speak to Salt of the Earth's very own environmentalist, emphasis on the mental because he's a proper naughty geezer, Professor Reese Figo. Unfortunately, Professor Reese couldn't be with us today because like, he was too busy sorting out the environment and that.